was an American sociologist called Ray Oldenburg who coined the phrase third space. He describes the first space in society as home, the second space as work, and the third space are those places that people go to outside of home and work, places where they go to switch off, to relax, to enjoy friendship. I'm Caroline Skinner and I'm the founder of Third Space Ministries and I'm really passionate about finding ways to make faith and life connect. In the church there's some great outreach going on that focuses on people in the home and the workplace but it's really on my heart to connect with people in the third spaces. A lot of these third spaces in society are areas of the leisure industry. These are areas which look glossy on the surface, but underneath there is um, a lot of need, there is a spiritual hunger that's going on there. Because third spaces are places where people are looking to develop relationship, they're looking for community, there are really significant opportunities for demonstrating God's love to people in these environments, to introduce them to a God of relationship. One of the exciting events that Third Space Ministries organises every year is outreach to the Wimbledon tennis queues, and we call that Love All, Serve All. Tonight we're in Wimbledon Park in the middle of Wimbledon tennis fortnight and we've got hundreds of people who are here camping overnight hoping to get a centre court or a court number one ticket to watch some amazing matches tomorrow and we're here as a team, as the Love All Serve All team uh, coming out to bless people in the queues, to just offer them a free can and a cookie and to show them that God loves them, to pray with them and just to spend time valuing them as people. We've had this year over a hundred volunteers who have got involved. The atmosphere when we're down here is just incredible. People receive us so warmly. A, a simple act of kindness makes such a difference in people's lives. Tomorrow we're going to try and get noticed on Santa Claus. We've got, we've like, got the Andy. We've got Andy. I just know, I'm like rocking a and And then for the... And then Songo, we've got Go Joe. It was quite cold. It was a bit muggy, a bit miserable. And then out of the blue, two, two people came with a, a bucket from your church, cans of pop and a, and a cupcake and, or a donut and just, just kind of lifted the spirits. My hope for the people who queue here every time that they encounter someone from the Love All Serve All team is that they will go away thinking that God is good and Christians are okay. So I feel that um, they've had a positive experience of Christianity. Can no. I have a cookie, please? Oh, thanks. Thank you Would so much. Would you like a cookie? Oh, and it's free. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you so much. Oh. Glug, glug, glug. I had a great conversation with a group of guys. One of them was a Hindu, one of them was a Buddhist, and one of them was a Christian. They were all really interested in Jesus and just wanted to know more about him. And so we were like, perfect, we can, we can talk about Jesus. They were like, we've never read a gospel, so we're like, oh, we've got one. It was just like, amazing. Well, I can honestly say this was the easiest type of evangelism I've, uh, I've ever had. It was great, great, really enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. Many of the team members come back and they say that it's not hard, it's not intimidating, but actually it's really enjoyable. And for me, that's what mission should be about anyway. Another regular activity is something that we call club and pray. A typical club and pray night would involve getting the team together in someone's house beforehand. We all eat together, we'll have a thought to inspire us and then we spend some time praying before we head out. I like praying and I like clubbing, so this is like the best thing ever. I love going to clubs. It's only natural, now that I'm a Christian, to want to do it and to glorify God doing it. Nightclub is a typical third place where people go outside of home and work just to let their hair down. God is as much um, there in a nightclub with us as he would be in a church building. It's important that Christians are part of culture and I think that, you know, this is what the people my age are doing tonight and I'm going to be a part of that. We seek to be a positive presence so we go and enjoy ourselves on the dance floor but we don't get drunk and we also ask God to show us what he sees when we're in the club. We worship God while we're dancing and we just pray for the things that we see around us. You're just going out having a good night, it just chats to people as normal and whatever God puts in your heart, um, I say just go with it. So a really easy thing to do, it's great. You can make you dance. As well as connecting with club culture on a local basis, 
There are opportunities to connect with the holiday makers and clubbers out in Ibiza, which is the world's clubbing capital. Third Space Ministries does three things essentially. Firstly, team outreach, so taking teams to Wimbledon tennis, to nightclubs, out to Ibiza. Secondly, chaplaincy work, working in gyms, uh, in the music industry, at sporting events such as the Olympics or World Cups. Thirdly, it's about working with churches, because we really want to encourage them to think about creatively engaging in the third spaces around them. So people can get involved in Third Space Ministries um, by just coming along and joining in on one of our events and getting a feel for it. Or they can give their time in other ways to help with the work from just a few hours a week to a mini summer internship. Or by inviting Third Space Ministries to help teach and train individuals for ministry in Third Spaces. And of course, prayer and financial support is always invaluable. What I really long to see is churches and Christians grasping the incredible opportunities that exist in third spaces around them and that as a result of this, people in third spaces will begin to discover a God that desperately loves them.